Hello everybody, dear colleagues, Department of Endocrinology, Tbilisi State Medical University, present a lecture, Diabetic Food and Infections in Diabetes. Lecture is given by the Head of Endocrinology Department of Tbilisi State Medical University, Professor David Metravelli. The Diabetic Food. Lecture is based on materials recommendations from the International Working Group on Diabetes Food in 2019. Food complications are one of more serious and costly complications of diabetes mellitus. Imputation of lower limb symptoms is usually preceded by the food alpha. A strategy which includes prevention, patient and staff education, multidisciplinary treatment of food also and close monitoring can reduce the amputation rate by the 49 to 85 percent. There are data about costs which are associated with alterations and non-traumatic lower extremity amputations in different countries. For example, the data from 1988 from Netherlands, uh, the um, primary healing in a hospital cost is the 10,000 uh, United uh, States dollars. In Sweden, uh, total direct cost until healing is 7,000 uh, dollars. Healing with an amputation. For example, in United Kingdom, in hospital cost, uh, the fourteen thousand dollars. In United States of America, uh, the uh, cost is eight thousand to twelve thousand dollars. But uh, in the same United States, uh, healing with uh, rehabilitation, uh, the much more twenty thousand to twenty-five thousand dollars and long-term cost, three-year period for, uh, from Sweden, for example, primary healing is $16,000 and more in a uh, case of uh, uh, patient without ischemia and $26,700 in patient with ischemia. So mm, it's uh, very costly complication. Pathophysiology. Also both the prevalence and spectrum of diabetic food disease vary by different regions of the world. The pathways of alteration are similar in the most patients. This also frequently results from a person with diabetes simultaneously having two or more risk factors with diabetic peripheral neuropathy and peripheral artery disease usually playing a central role. <clears throat> the neuropathy leads to an insensitivity and sometimes deformed foot after uh, often causing abnormal loading of the foot. In people with neuropathy, minor trauma uh, can precipitate alteration of the foot. Loss of protective sensation Foot deformities and uh, limited joint mobility can result in abnormal biomechanical uh, loading of the foot. This produces high mm, uh, mechanical stress in some areas, the response to which is usually sickness, skin, callus, and the callus then leads to a further increase in the loading of the foot, often with subcutaneous hemorrhage and eventually skin ulceration. Whatever the primary cause of ulceration, continued walking on the insensitive food impairs healing of the ulcer. Mechanisms of ulcer uh, developing from repetitive or excessive mechanical stress. Here in the picture we can see this process from beginning to uh, formation of uh, deep ulcer in the foot. 
Peripheral artery disease, PAD, generally caused by atherosclerosis, is present in up to 50% of patients with a diabetic foot ulcer. And PAD is an important risk factor for impaired wood healing and lower extremity amputation. A small percentage of foot ulcers in patients with severe PAD are poorly ischemic. These are usually painful and may hollow minor trauma. The majority of foot ulcers, however, are either poorly neuropathic or neuroischemic, uh, caused by combined neuropathy and ischemia. In patients with neuroischemic ulcer, symptoms may be absent because of the neuropathy despite severe pedal ischemia. Recent studies suggest that diabetic microangiopathy does not appear to be the primary cause of their ulcer or of poor wound healing. And what about pathways of diabetic foot ulcer? So well, it starts with diabetes. Uh, the diabetes is art neuropathy, and because of this motor or sensory, uh, the damage to limited joint mobility, postural coordination division, decreased pain sensation, uh, autonomic neuropathy without diminished sweating, dry skin, fever, um, and altered blood flow regulation, and angiopathy also without microangiopathy and peripheral vascular disease. And um, the foot deformities results uh, callus and dry skin, fever, trauma, and uh, in a quiet food wear, uh, with a trauma again, or ischemia, uh, results foot ulcer, and um, uh, secondary infection, and gangrene, results amputation. Differential features of food disease in diabetes mellitus. There are different uh, differences among neuropathic food and ischemic food. Uh, for example, sensor defect usually presents in neuropathic food, but mm, not necessary for ischemic food. Pulses is usually present in neuropathic food, but uh, there is the absent uh, this pulse uh, in ischemic food. Food structure is changed in a neuropathic uh, food. And callus ulceration, uh, we see mainly in case of neuropathic food, but ulceration, but not a pressure point, we see in ischemic food. And plain radiograph, usually uh, plain radiograph may show calcified arteries in case of ischemic food. But here, in this um, picture, we see the calcified uh, artery of uh, leg. And now we can show photo illustrations of clinical cases. Diabetic neuropathic feet, callus formation as a presentation of neuropathy. Insensitive food. For example, a 67 years old lady walked with a piece of porcelain in her shoe and causing a large plantar ulcer. And the next case, 47 years old male lost his lighter after walking for three hours. He found it in the back of his shoe, not knowing that he had insensitive feet. And he lost his first toy because of this. In case of mm, uh, peripheral vascular disease, we we'll see pregangrenos here in this picture, forced to it for due to ischemia. It's a minor green so in the forced to it. And the next picture, major uh, green. And also uh, cracked dry skin due to autonomic neuropathy with a superficial neuropathic ulcer between the first and the second toy. And uh, again, superficial plantar ulcer without infection. 
in the next photo of superficial ulcer caused by mechanical stress portrayed by cloud coat and food deformity. And patient has muscle atrophy. Here we can see also with uh, cellulitis and exudation. Development of plant are also caused by mechanical stress. Different stages in the development of the plantar ulcer. We can see in this picture superficial uh, defect and then it became uh, the peak mm, ulcer. Osteomyelitis. Mm, 75 years old male with deep foot infection and osteomyelitis. Uh, in this mm, uh, picture, the foot. And because of osteomyelitis. Arthropathy, circle joint, may sometimes develop in any joint, but most often affect the ankle. It should be suspected in a neuropathic foot, which became, which became actually swollen. Charcot's arthropathy is a severe complication with a high risk of amputation as the foot structure becomes disorganized. Radiographs reveal Disorganization, disorganization of the bone, which results in a deformed foot such as a rocker, bottom deformity, or a swollen, disorganized knee. Treatment includes rest, immobilization, footwear, constructive surgery, inexpert hands, and possibly biphosphonates. In this picture, again, we see uh, the leg of the charcot foot deformity. Cornerstones of foot ulcer prevention. The IWGDF 2019 risk certification system and corresponding foot screening frequency. This risk certification system show that category zero has very low risk of ulcer and patient in this case has no loss of protective sensation and has no periphery artery disease. Such patients with diabetes should be seen once a year. In case of category one, there is low risk of ulcer when patient has a low loss of protective sensation or has periphery artery disease. In such cases, the frequency of the meeting is the once every six to 12 months. In case of category two, the ulcer risk is moderate. Such uh, in such cases, patient has uh, loss of protective sensation plus periphery artery disease or may have loss of protective sensation plus foot deformity or may have periphery artery disease plus foot deformity. In such cases, uh, the patient should be seen in once um, every three to six months. And uh, in case of category 3, the ulcer risk is high and uh, such patients had uh, loss of protective sensation or periphery artery disease and one or more of the following. History of a foot ulcer or lower extremity amputation, minor or major, and stage renal disease. And in such cases, patients should be seen in uh, every one to three weeks, uh, three months. Sorry. Identify the at risk foot. The absence of symptoms in a person with diabetes does not exclude foot disease. They may have a symptomatic neuropathy, peripheral artery disease, pre signs, or even an ulcer. 
So it's recommended to examine a person with diabetes at a very low risk of food acceleration annually for signs of symptoms of loss of uh, protective sensation and peripheral artery disease to identify if they are at risk for food alteration. About previous ulcer lower extremity amputation and claudication, we should uh, collect uh, information carefully uh, for identification of patients who are at risk for food alteration. Uh, very important to know about vascular status, palpation, or uh, pedal pulses. Uh, in case of loss of protective sensation, we should assess with one of the following techniques. Pressure pre perception, Siemens Weinstein 10 gram monofilaments, and vibration percep uh, perception, 128 hertz turning fork. What should we do for identification of patients who are at risk for foot ulceration? When monofilament or no turning fork are not available, test tactile sensation, lightly touch the tips of the toes of the patient with the tip of the doctor's uh, index finger for one to two seconds. Uh, LOPC is usually caused by diabetic polyneuropathy. If present, it is usually necessary to um, elicit, elicit uh, further history and conduct further examination into its causes and consequences. It's very important to regularly inspecting and examining the atrized foot at risk foot in case of a risk uh, stage one or higher. In a person with diabetes with loss of protective sensation of peripheral artery disease, at a risk uh, one to three uh, degrees, perform a more comprehensive examination, including the following history, inquiring about previous ulcer, lower extremity amputation, and stage renal disease, previous food education, social isolation, poor access to health care and financial constraints, food pain with walking or rest, or numbness or claudication. It's very important to know vascular status, whether it's palpation or pedal pulses, and the skin. Assessing for skin, color, temperature, presence of callus or edema, pre-ulcerative signs, and also assessment of bone and joint. Uh, it's uh, important, it's recommended to check for deformities, abnormally large bone prominence, or limited joint mobility. And it's recommended to examine the feet with the patient both lying down and standing up. It's recommended to, assessment for, uh, to assess for loss of pro protective sensation if on a previous examination protective sensation was uh, intact. And footwear, ill fitting inadequate or lack of footwear, and poor foot hygiene, for example, um, improperly cut toenails, unwashed feet, superficial fungal infection, or unclean socks. And physical limitations that may under food self-care and food care knowledge also is very important. Footwear should be sufficiently wide to accommodate the feet, um, uh, accommodate the foot without excessive pressure on the skin. Regular inspection and examination of at foot risk in case of risk uh, one and higher. Following examination of the food strategy, each patient using the mm, uh, IWGDF uh, risk stratification category system to guide subsequent preventative screening frequencies and management. Any foot ulcer identified during screening should be treated. Educating patients 
family and healthcare professionals about food care. Education presented in a structured, organized and uh, repeated manner is widely considered uh, to play an important role in the prevention of diabetic foot ulcer. The aim is to improve a patient's food self-care knowledge and self-protective behavior and to enhance their motivation and skills to facilitate adherence to this behavior. People with diabetes, in particular those with IWGDF risk 1 or higher, should learn uh, how to recognize food ulcers and pre-ulcerative signs and be aware of these steps they need to take when problems arise. The educator should demonstrate specific skills to the patient, such as how to cut or inhale appropriately. And here in this picture, we uh, can see the proper way to cut or inhale. Educating patients, family, and healthcare professionals about food care. A member of the healthcare team should provide structured education individually or in small groups of people in multiple sessions with periodical uh, reinforcement and uh, preferably using a mixture of methods. The structured education should be culturally appropriate, account for gender differences and align with the patient health level, uh, literacy and personal circumstances. It is essential to assess whether the person with diabetes and optimally any close family member or career have, has understood the messages, is motivated to act and adhere to the advice to ensure sufficient safe care still. Furthermore, healthcare professionals providing these instructions should receive periodic education to improve their own skills in this care for people at high risk for food ulceration. Practical recommendations for patients with diabetes mellitus for self-monitoring of the lower limb conditions. And when you inspect your feet, you want to make sure that you have a good light source. You want to make sure you use corrective lenses if needed. And uh, you want to make sure that you evaluate each and every part of your foot. If we look specifically at those parts, we start with the toenails and looking around the edges of the nails in particular. In between the toes, you want to make sure that you're not seeing any sort of cracks or fissuring within the skin. And then a complete exam along the bottom of the foot. Now for some of us, it's difficult to uh, accurately contort yourself or look at the bottom of your foot uh, such that you're going to get that, in that information back. Using a mirror can sometimes be helpful. Some mirrors may be equipped with a handle that can make it easier for you to look and inspect at the bottom of your foot accurately. If this is not realistic for you, reaching out to friends or family to help you inspect your feet is an important thing to consider as well. In particular, when you're inspecting your feet, keep an eye out for bony prominences from one end of the foot to the other. In particular, look for the bony areas around your ankle, around the back or underside of your heel, and especially around the ball of the foot and toes, these are areas that can be easily irritated just from pressure from shoe gear or from either lying in bed from the pressure from the underlying mattress. As part of your foot exam, you should also make sure to inspect your shoe gear and to make sure that they're fitting you properly, looking for signs of wear and tear with the shoes, and also to reach inside the shoes to make sure there are no foreign objects that could cause problems for your feet. Now, along with, with a daily inspection of your feet, you should also keep these other things in mind. Proper foot hygiene is a must for every diabetic patient, and you should also look to avoid walking barefoot at all times. Make sure that the shoes that you wear fit you properly. If the problem develops, there are different ways it may present. For example, around the toenails, sometimes it'll be thickness, discoloration, or redness. Sometimes drainage from underneath the nail uh, can present as an early warning sign or problem. In between the toes, redness, fissuring, or drainage can also occur. Open wounds or thickened skin on the bottom of your foot that can be painless can also be an early sign of a bigger problem. Your skin acts as a barrier for your entire body, including your feet, 
And it's important to maintain that barrier. Anytime there's a breakdown, that's an opportunity for bacteria to get in there and cause a serious problem. If you see any signs of skin breakdown, redness, or swelling, especially in the absence of pain, it is extremely important that you reach out to your healthcare professional immediately. Some diabetic uh, foot problems can be treated uh, fairly quickly and easily without too much interference in one's lifestyle. However, some problems can lead to more significant issues that can result in uh, open sores with your feet. It can also lead towards infection, hospitalization, or in the worst case scenario, could result in surgery or loss of limb. So in order to avoid this, you want to stay on top of things on a regular basis. It's very important to have information about areas of the foot at highest risk for ulceration. And in this picture, we can see the areas of the foot at highest risk of ulceration. And again, the areas of highest risk of alteration. How to perform a medical examination of the lower limbs of patients with diabetes? Hello, my name is Colin Brister and I'm a fifth year medical student here. Can I ask your name please? Yes, yeah, Dennis Matthews. Okay, Dennis. Now, I understand you have diabetes, and I've been asked to examine your legs today. That will just involve me che checking the sensation in your legs and checking some of the pulses in your legs, and then watching you walk afterwards. Would that be all right? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Okay. First of all, if I could ask you to just lift your shorts up a little bit. That's excellent. I'm just going to have a look at your legs from the end of the bed. All right? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to check for any hair loss, any skin changes, any redness or ulcers. Okay, and I'm just going to have a look between your toes, Dennis, alright? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll also check the bottom of your feet. That's great. Can you lift your heel up? And the other one? Brilliant. Okay, Dennis, I'm just going to have a feel of your legs now. That will just involve me feeling down your legs and feeling the pulses. Is that alright? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, Dennis, I'm just going to have a feel of your toes now. I'm just going to press gently on the bottom of them. Okay, I'm now going to test the sensation in the bottom of your foot with this monofilament. It feels like this. Mm -hmm. And again, I'd like you to close your eyes and let me know if you can feel it on the left or the right hand side. Okay. All right. Right. Left. Okay, I'd like to test vibration in your feet now, and that's going to involve me placing this tuning fork on your feet with your eyes closed. I'd like you to tell me if you feel the vibration and tell me when it stops, mm -hmm. right? So it normally feels like this. Okay. All right. So close your eyes. Yeah. And it stopped. Yeah. Stopped. Okay, Dennis, I'm just going to test your sense of joint position now. So, with your toe, this is up, 
and this is down. Mm -hmm. You close your eyes and tell me whether it's going up or down. Okay. Up. Down. Down. Going in. Up. Down. Down. Okay, Dennis, I'd just like to test your reflexes now, so I'm just going to tap the back of your leg with this tendon hammer just gently. Is that alright? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Okay. Could you just lift this knee up and flop your leg out to the side? Brilliant. Great. Okay, Dennis, I'd just like to watch you walk now, so if you could come off the bed, and then if you could just walk across in front of the bed for me. Okay, Dennis, so that's me finished my examination. Would you mind if I had a quick look at your shoes just before you put them back on? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Okay. Right, that's great. Thank you very much for letting me examine you. No problem. The should be tested for loss of protective sensation with the 10 gram Siemens Weinstein monofilament. Here we can see the sides. And the proper method of using the 10 gram Siemens Weinstein monofilament. Proper method for using a 128 hertz uh, turning fork for check for vib vib vibratory sensation. Levels of care for diabetic foot disease. So now uh, this uh, level may be level one in general practitioner, podiatrist, and diabetes nurse. Level two is diabetology, surgeon, and inf inf uh, infectious disease specialist or clinical microbiologist, podiatrist, and diabetes nurse in collaboration with sure technique, orthosis, or prosthetics. And level three, it's a level two mm, food center that is specialized in diabetic food care with multiple experts from several disciplines, each specialist in this area working together and the text as a tertiary reference center. Here we can see the therapeutic food wear for people with diabetes. Treatment of infection. In case of superficial or also with limited soft tissue uh, infection. Clean, uh, divide all necrotic tissue and surrounding colors. Start empiric oral antibiotic therapy targeted and uh, in case of deep or extensive infection, urgently evaluate for need for surgical intervention to remove necrotic tissue, including infected bone or uh, release compartment pressure or drain abscesses. Assess for uh, peripheral artery disease. If present, consider urgent treatment, including revascularization. Initiate the empiric parenteral broad spectrum antibiotic therapy aimed to common gram positive and gram negative bacteria, including obligate anaerobics. Adjust the antibiotic regimen based on both the clinical response to empirical therapy and culture and sensitivity results. results. Metabolic control and treatment of comorbidities. Metabolic control and treatment of comorbidities is very important. To, yeah, it's important to optimize glycemic control if necessary with insulin and to treat edema or malnutrition if present. Local ulcer care. A regular inspection of the ulcer by a trained health care provider is essential. Its frequency depends on the severity of the ulcer and underlying pathology. The presence of infection 
the amount of oxidation and wound treatment provided. Divide the alpha and revolves around the calls uh, and repeat as needed. Here we can see how it is possible to remove occult uh, in case of um, foot ulcer. It's recommended to select dressing to control excess oxidation and maintain most environment. Uh, do not soak the feet as uh, it may in the induce skin maceration. And consider negative pressure to help help post-operative wounds. In this picture, it's a very interesting picture. What we see is that after amputation of the second toy, Installing uh, of orthosis between first and third digit by a podiatrist to prevent deformity. Summary on the diabetic foot. Diabetic foot disease is caused by peripheral neuropathy and arterial disease and by infection secondary to trauma or laceration. Anatomical abnormality or poor footwear can lead to callus and ulceration. Infections must be treated early and aggressively. Inhibitations are a last resort. And infections in diabetes. Diabetic patients are more prone to a series of different infections, including bacterial and fungal damages of urinary tract and skin. A very special problem in diabetes is tuberculosis. Hyperglycemia can affect the innate immune response and this allows the problems with blood supply and maintaining the skin surface structure, probably explains the excess risk for this broad range of infections. Equally, infections may lead to a loss of glycemic control and are a common cause of ketoacidosis. Insulin-treated patients need to increase their dose in the face of infection, and non-insulin-treated patients may need insulin therapy when they have an infection. Infections occurring in diabetes mellitus. There are mm, a lot of different infections. Here we can see is the list of these uh, infections especially urinary tract infections and uh, tuberculosis, but very important. Life-threatening infections in diabetic patients. In this uh, table, we see the type of this infection, uh, causative factors, uh, treatment, and mortality rate. And we can see that there are a lot of different types of uh, life-threatening infections, and in this case, the mortality rate is enough high in any cases, about 40%, 40 percent, 40 and 50 percent. And at last, COVID-19 and diabetes. This um, uh, are based on IDF, IDF data on May 2020, coronavirus. COVID-19 is a new and potentially serious coronavirus. The World Health Organization has declared the COVID-19 outbreak to be a public health emergency, emergency in international concern. Over 4 million people around the world have been known to be infected. People with diabetes are among the most vulnerable to serious complications and deaths caused by coronavirus. While not everyone with diabetes has the same level of risk, the recommendations target broad changes in the behavior from everyone in the diabetes community to protect these members of the community who are at the most at risk. What should people with diabetes know and do? For people living with diabetes, it is important to take precautions to avoid the virus if possible. 
the recommendations that are being widely issued to, to the general public are doubly important for the people living with diabetes and anyone in close contact with people living with diabetes. Idea of recommendations for people with diabetes in pandemic COVID-19. Prepare in case you get ill. Make sure you have all relevant contact details to hand in case you need them. Pay extra attention to your glucose control. Regular monitoring can help avoid complications caused by high or low blood glucose. If you do show flu-like symptoms, it is important to consult, consult a healthcare professional. If you are coughing or flu, this may indicate an infection, so you should seek medical support and treatment immediately. Any infection is going to raise your glucose level and increase your need for fluids, so make sure you can access a, uh, assess a sufficient supply of water. Make sure you have a good supply of the diabetic medications you need. And think what you would need if you had a quarantine yourself for a few weeks. Make sure you have access to enough food. Make sure you will be able to correct the situation if, you blood, if your blood glucose drops suddenly. If you live alone, make sure someone you can really on knows you have diabetes as you may require assistance if you get ill. Keep a regular schedule avoiding our work and having a good night's sleep. And it's a, a photo of IDF president Professor Andrew Bolton. And uh, we can you know, show IDF president's recommendations for people with diabetes in pandemic of COVID-19. We've known for many years that people with diabetes are generally at a slightly greater risk of developing infections. And we presume, although the data are not really there yet, that those, that's true also for coronavirus. But again, I would say and emphasize that there is relatively good news for our younger people with diabetes, uh, often with type 1 diabetes, uh, and that is in China and also in Italy. Nobody under the age of 25 with diabetes has been admitted to hospital. So this is reassuring. I think for older people with diabetes, the most important thing is blood sugar control. And the studies just out of Wuhan suggest that firstly, the average age of people being admitted to hospital with diabetes was 66. But those whose blood sugar control is not as good do not do as well as those people with good blood sugar control. So I cannot overemphasize for all people with diabetes at this very difficult time we find ourselves in, the importance of looking after the blood sugars, looking after your diabetes. I think the advice for people with diabetes is not particularly different from the advice we should all be following. And I cannot overemphasize enough personal hygiene. Viruses don't like soap and water. So regular washing of hands for 20 seconds is the current advice, but advice does change. So keep in touch, keep listening to if the advice has changed. Your personal hygiene is of huge importance. Keep away from other people. Other people in your house should also be practicing the same regular hand washing social distancing the current advice but it may change is to try and keep two meters or six feet away from other people and of course the importance of keeping blood sugar control as i've already said cannot be overemphasized and this goes along with a healthy lifestyle a sensible healthy diet but also taking exercise wherever that is possible if you have a private garden, of course, that's the opportunity. 
If you don't, then exercise at home is possible. There are now good websites that are helping people with that. So it's looking after yourself and thinking about keeping distance from other people. The advice is there from all our governments, which is pretty much the same. Listen and keep up to date. If people do feel ill, and perhaps have symptoms that might be suggestive of coronavirus, such as a dry cough, a persistent fever, and generally feeling unwell, then the most important thing is, first of all, contact their healthcare professional, whether it be a hospital diabetes doctor, whether it be primary care, a diabetes nurse, whoever you normally speak to. And this can be done by telephone. It doesn't need a face-to-face -face interaction. In general, the same sick rules apply as for other illnesses. Look after your blood sugar. Often at times of stress, you might need more medication because at times of stress, the blood sugars tend to go up. And one stress, of course, is illness. Another one is anxiety, and many people will be experiencing anxiety at the present time. But look after your fluid balance, drink plenty of fluids, unless, of course, you're one of those people who has some kidney problem, in which case you absolutely need to contact your healthcare professional for advice about fluid intake. So it's a sensible diet, medication as suggested by your healthcare professional, looking after the blood sugar. Having a complication of diabetes affects many people. What I would say, first of all, is that they may need frequent consultation, but this can be done by telephone. Most people, it isn't necessary for them to come to the hospital. Particularly, for example, in my patients who have had kidney transplant, they're on drugs to reduce the, the rejection chances, so they're at greater risk. And rather than have my clinic earlier this week, I did it by telephone with patients who had had a kidney transplant. And the other is the area of foot complications. And if you have got an active foot problem, you probably do need to be seen. But we've set up clinics in the community so that patients don't come to the hospital because the hospital is potentially the place that is holding coronavirus. So if we can keep people with diabetes and complications away from the hospital, do telephone consultations, and if they need to be seen, we are arranging to see them off-site. So in other words, they're not having to come to the hospital. On behalf of the International Diabetes Federation, I'd like really to express my sincere thanks to all those who are helping in this effort to look after people with diabetes, to look after other people who are coming to the hospital, whether they be doctors, nurses, ward assistants, cleaners, and the pharmacists and those delivering drugs and those who are slightly putting themselves at greater risk. So thanks to all of them from the IDF. Thank you very much.